Well, hello again. We're here at uh, the historic Washington Navy Yard, Leetsy Park. Uh, this is the old uh, center of the Navy Yard where they have their trophy cannons and so forth displayed. You can see there's two great big uh, cannonballs over there. Let's see, cannonballs, yeah, two great big cannonballs. Now here we got some uh, cannons that are buried. These are old uh, 32 pounders, Navy 32 pounders, and there are four of them that have the sole purpose of uh, holding down the halyards for the flagpole. Uh, so that's a lot of weight. There's probably three tons in each one of those, most of which is buried. But now what we'll do is uh, look at the upper vet mortars. These were used for powder testing before they knew that it wasn't really a good way to do it. These are about uh, five and a half inch bore, I'm guessing. Of course, the bores are uh, closed up. They're all uh, all seem to be marked somehow. This one looks like uh, maybe number 11. But anyway, they're small iron mortars used for, uh, I say small, they probably weigh a couple hundred pounds a piece. Uh, but they were used for testing gunpowder and how far the shot traveled after you fired it with three ounces of powder would uh, supposedly tell you how good the powder was. <clears throat> now here's a little description of the upper vent mortars. There you go, tell you all about them. There's 32 pounders again, another upper vent mortar over there. Okay. Of course, here's the uh, flag and the flagpole. They have the U.S. Navy flag and the uh, national ensign up the top of the flagpole. This tells you all about the Washington Navy Yard. There's the symbol of the Washington Navy Yard right there. And this description will tell you all about it. You got that? Okay. Uh, closed in the season in 1961. And this is the U.S. Navy's oldest shore establishment. Uh, occupies land set aside by George Washington for use by the federal government. And uh, let's see, 1814 British troops occupied Washington and uh, the original commandant Thomas Tingey was ordered to burn the base to prevent falling into enemy hands. Too bad. Then they rebuilt it and it goes on from there. We got the bell of the uh, USS Mitcher, which is uh, DDG 35 and a plaque telling you about Admiral Mitcher. A hero of World War II. Bell of the Mitcher. I'm not going to ring it. I could, but I don't think the Marines here would like that very much. And they have guns, so I'm just going to keep walking. Now let's read all about Leetsy Park. Historic Precinct Walking Tour Number 8, Leetsy Park Gun Collection. And you can read that for yourself, all right? Uh, one gun, trophy number 18, was captured twice. Once from the Bay of Algiers in the Barbary War, second time from the CSA after it had been placed in the Norfolk Navy Yard. Okay, and this is a big ceremonial area for the Navy. They've got many, many salute guns out there. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, three of those on the left I recognize as 40 millimeter guns one two three of those and then the four lined up there are older three pounder guns okay from the 1890s and uh, I don't know if ammunition is still loaded for those or not so I suspect what they're doing is using the 40 millimeter salute guns over here and those things are noisy they fire one pound of powder out of a not very large bore about an inch and a half and they'll knock your eardrums out if you're anywhere close to them Okay, let's go back and let's start looking at some of these cannons. Unfortunately, the cannons have been out here for some 150 years or more, and uh, they're really starting to show a lot of corrosion. And uh, the birds leave their bird droppings on them. They're totally unprotected. I mean, they could paint them or something, but unfortunately, they're just out here, and uh, they're getting all corroded. So uh, 
But let's look at what these cannons are. Here's a Spanish 12 pounder, all right? El Desperado, 1803, Barcelona. You can still read the name on this one. El Desperado, see? And let's go back here. Unfortunately, on this one, you can still see the coat of arms of uh, the cipher of uh, King Carlos IV. We're starting to lose the inscription of where it was made and when it was made. You can still read, uh, anyway, the, the, the heat number, number 6095, but the, the foundry it was cast in, uh, I can no longer read anyway. And then that would be the month it's cast, day, and then it all followed by the month and the year. And I guess at one time you could read the year and the month pretty clearly. It's starting to fade away now. Just kind of too bad these things are being left to uh, the elements because the acid rain really eats them up. And it's progressive from what I can see. In other words, uh, from now on out it'll be being eaten up at a faster rate than it was before. That's just the way it works. The uh, acid rain eats the bronze out and uh, you can see the green on the concrete. Well that's where the bronze is left and there's quite a bit of it down there and the rain just washes it off, what it uh, eats off of the cannon and then that washes into the ground and there you go. Uh, pretty soon enough of the cannon washes off so you can't read the markings anymore. Especially if you get additional acid like the uh, bird droppings are all over this thing. This one was rifled um, long after it was cast. This, this would have been rifled in the 1860s most likely. And probably this little inscription right here, which I can't quite make out, it looks like a 12.0, oh, uh, 12.co. Probably means 12 pounder short is what it was originally and now it's a rifled gun with a slightly larger bore. And that's an unusual rifling that I don't have a name for yet. We're going to have to look that up and uh, let you know what type of rifling this was. But again, the, the gun was cast uh, around 1800, a little after, and it was rifled around 1860 to allow it to shoot further and uh, much more accurately. <clears throat> this was done all over Europe, especially in France. Uh, old smooth bores were rifled and given a new life. At the same time, they added sights to them. And so we'll go back here, and these three holes are where what we call a trunnion sight was bolted on. Now, whether it was done by the Spanish or the Confederates, I'm not sure. Uh, well, I guess Confederates never had this one, all right? It was uh, captured in Manila. So the Spanish had to have done that. And they also added a breech sight down here, which slid up and down for various elevation. Okay, and there was a locking screw on that side. So that was another addition. And there's the bush vent there. Bush meaning there's a piece of rock copper screwed down in there because it resisted the uh, flame and temperature better than the bronze. And you could also replace it if it burned out, which it would often do with a rifled gun. Okay. So again, very nice old weapon, very historic. Uh, and again, too bad the bronze is just being allowed to wash off of it, as you see here. You see all the green down there? Well, that's what that is, is bronze washing off. It then runs off the concrete uh, into the dirt and uh, does whatever there to the dirt. But see the difference in color? That's bronze. It's washed right off of there. Sad situation.